Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome um, to Rock Sim Live with not Tim Van Milligan, um, with me, Michelle. Um, I'm the office manager here at Apogee Components, and hopefully you can see me, or well, you can see me and hear me. Um, if there's any issues, let me know. Uh, even though this is, I've been doing this a couple times now, every time it's a little bit of a, hopefully I did it all right, said it all, all right. Um, and um, I'm here today to talk about Roxim with uh, you guys with some any questions you might have. So put some questions in the chat if you have any. Um, I have a couple queued up, uh, one from last time, one that was emailed in and something that popped up this week. Um, but if you have any other questions, feel free to let um, me know and I will attempt to answer them. Tim is back. Um, he's in the country right now at the airport, um, so he'll be back uh, in town this weekend, and then next week he'll be back doing these Rocks and Wives, and hopefully he can answer any of the ones that I wasn't able to, um, or go over some of the things that um, could be more in-depth for that. So, um, we've got a couple people here in the chat. I forgot to schedule it for this week, so thank you guys for come and join in without it being scheduled. Um, I appreciate everybody. We've got Tom Goudreau, True Blue Kangaroo, Not Run, Not Me, um, and Mobskins, oh, Michael O'Brien, <laughs> um, and Vernon just checked in. So um, it's great to see the regulars and maybe some new names too. Um, so to start, um, uh, last week, um, we had a question about the CD of the rocket um, and determining it and whether it changed. And I did a little check on here, and the CD does change. And the way to see that in Roxim is to actually plot the. Um, take that down there. Um, it's been a bit of a day, so sorry, I'm still figuring everything out. Um, what the easiest way to tell is to plot it in the graph um, feature. And if you ever watched him talking about Roxim, the graphing feature is one of the more underused um, tools in Roxim. Um, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. Um, so let me switch to my screen.
Okay. Let's try. Can you hear me now? Does that work? It's like the mic. Oh, these probably aren't. Mm -hmm. Let's try this. Okay, can you hear me now? Just the faint. Okay. Let me try this. Okay. Looks okay. Brendan, you might grab, I think Tim has a microphone on his desk. You might grab that and bring him in just in case yeah. this doesn't work. I'm sorry guys, I forgot I was supposed to, Tim's gone for two weeks. Normally I'd only do this for one, so I didn't uh, charge the microphone. That's totally on me. Um, if that gets too loud or too soft, just let me know. Um, we're going to try and grab a external microphone but um so I'm not sure where I cut out but um once you run your simulation you can click on the graph icon and then choose what you want to graph so time is usually pretty common there and then um yeah I'll stand on to let me turn that off see if that helps with the background noise um and then you can choose whatever you want so time versus altitude time versus acceleration you can do all sorts of things um, in here, but in this case, we'll do time versus CD um, for that. And then um, we'll plot the graph. And when you, as you can see here, this clearly the green is this coefficient of drag and that does change. So um, those, um, so the coefficient of drag does change. I said it didn't last week because I wasn't thinking clearly, but, um, but yeah, Brendan's being my trusty yeah. assistant here. Um, actually, okay, here, um, I think I have to plug it in the right be here. Hopefully this will help better um, with that. So we'll be good. The regular microphone's working too, so. Um, I don't know if this has an on and off button. We'll see. Um, okay, so, all right, let me try that. Does that work okay? Does that sound better? Less white noise, maybe? I'll keep going um, here. I'm also a little froggy. I've been doing some video tutorials this morning, so my voice is going a little bit. Um, but so yeah, so you can do use this to see your coefficient of drag to change. So um, Mike, maybe last week, Mark, something like that. Mark Sell, I think, was the one who had asked that last week. Um, and uh, yeah, for some reason the headphone is like, sound is going crazy. Um, so hopefully that's still working. Um, oh, so then the next question that came in, um, Ron Kaminsky emailed um, asking about um, um, in, Ro in the Roxham Visualizer how to add a new launch uh, location. Um, hello? Oh, it's over here. <laughs> Uh, losing my mind a little bit today, guys. Sorry. Um, so, um, if you're interested in becoming a beta tester for the um, launch visualizer, you can do that by filling out the contact form on our website. So, if you come here, click on the contact form, um, that'll take you there. This is just taking a really long time to load. Um, but this is the launch visualizer, um, so it's in beta testing right now. Um, it's we're kind of coming up on the final, final tweaks and, and things, and working a little bit on the how-to guides and um, 
then we'll start all the marketing and everything for this. So um, we're, we're, we're seeing the home stretch now on this. Um, and the launch visualizer, if you're not familiar with it, is um, is a like add-on for Roxim. So Roxim, you would use to design your rockets, and then the launch visualizer is a way um, to. So in ro regular Roxim, like this flight, if I wanted to see the flight, I would go to the 2D flight profile, and it's going to run this little animation, but it's like a little cartoon animation kind of. So it you know, it's just a flat 2D. It's a good tool for also troubleshooting and looking at your rocket, making sure it's not weather cocking or anything, seeing where it's going to land, seeing when your parachute's going to pop out. But um, it, uh, um, but yeah, so it's still, it's a 2D cartoon. So the hope was to do a 3D version of it, of that, and that's what the launch visualizer is. It's essentially a 3D version of seeing your rocket fly. So you can't change your rocket once it's designed. Um, you just can um, load it in. So the, the launch visualizer has a couple of launch um, rockets preloaded. Um, and then once you are, um, there's three different like membership levels sort of. And the first level is just go to the website and use it. Um, you're not signed in, you're not anything, there's no no personal information that's gathered for that. Um, but you're locked into a real basic demo mode. So you can only use the pre-existing designs. Right now we only have a couple, there'll be more added eventually, but um, the demo designs, there's only like four here. Um, and then um, once you do, then the next level is signing in. Um, so you can create an account you go here and sign in. Um, I'm already signed in, but um, and that all that is is just putting in your email address. So you have an account, um, but you um, it doesn't cost anything. It's still free. It's still um, you don't have all the features. You have access to some of the features, um, but it's still pretty neat. And then um, the third level, the premium level, which is what this account I have is set at. That's um, eventually will be the paid level. Um, but also, if you're a beta tester and you start providing some valuable feedback, then we will bump you up to premium level and you'll have access to all the features. Um, if you have sent information in the last two weeks, Tim's been gone. I've been trying to stay on top of it, but it has been a really, really busy year. So um, nobody's been bumped up to premium this week. I'm sorry. I'll pass it along to Tim and he can kind of take care of those next week um, and take care of the feedback. But um, yes, so this is Launch Visualizer. Um, on this screen, you choose your rocket. On this screen, you set your launch site. Then you choose your motor, set your weather. Um, or sorry, you set your launch angle and launch pad. Weather, choose your motor. Um, this is your um, parachutes and recovery devices, um, dual deployment, anything like that. And then your flight results after the fact. Um, that was a real quick overview, but we went over it in deep, more detail last week. So if you check out last week's um, Roxim Live, I kind of go over the different tabs a little more. But Ron's question was, how do I add a new launch site? And um, the default launch site um, in the launch visualizer is the SCORE launch site. That's our um, semi-local club. It's about an hour from here. And um, they have a huge launch site. It's really great. Um, so that's kind of the default right now, just because that's what Tim chose. But if you want to go to a different launch site, there are options. Um, you can go to choose your launch site, and this will bring up the list of um, all the like club locations that have made, been made public to us. Um, so they have just the number, then their organization, NAR, Triple E, um, the launch site name. Some you know clubs have multiple sites. Um, and they've got latitude, longitude, altitude, the club name, the club website if that's available, um, and if there's any description or anything. Um, this right now is a little bit beta-y, but, um, but yeah, so you can choose from it. So obviously if you're not in Colorado, you may not want to launch at the SCORE launch site, so you just choose a different one and click OK, and that will load your new launch site here. Um, it's loading really slow because I'm also running the streaming software and they both take up a lot of space, so it just takes a bit um, to load. But um, 
the launch site here and um, you can kind of see over here this is a very weird angle but um, for there so that's how you choose from an existing launch site so say you want to add a new launch site um, Ron's question had to do with like a lot of people launch at local parks or schools um, so they're not official club launch sites but you still want to see what your rocket looks like and launching in that wherever that tiny place is um, so you can add your own launch site um, and if it's a launch site like say it's a new club you make a new NAR or AAA club and you have a launch site that's like available to other people you can actually share it um, and we can make a public for people so somebody you know who's in your area might go hey where can I launch look here say oh there's a lot there's a club location nearby um, and um, can get more information about you know launching at that site um, but say you just want to do it because you're launching one of the things we've noticed is when people that one of the first things people like to do is um, try launching from their house um, can't do that in real life most of the time unless you live on some you know quite a bit of land um, you can't launch from your you know one of the people here launched from their you know, try to launch from their balcony of their apartment building um, can't do that in real life but that's kind of the fun of the launch visualizers you can play with it so Ram was asking, how do you add a launch site? What you need is the GPS coordinates of that site. So, um, and you may know how to get those, you may not. I don't really know at the top, off the top of my head how you would pull the GPS coordinates. Google may give that to you. What I did was I literally just Googled GPS coordinates and the top website that popped up was gps-coordinates.net. Um, it seems like a perfectly fine website, lots of ads, but um, if you scroll down, you can put the address in. And I did this earlier with the Eiffel Tower. Actually, I had to Google the GPS coordinates of the Eiffel Tower because this website does it by um, address. But Ron's question was, um, could we launch a rocket from the Apogee um, parking lot? Um, so, Oops, I don't know where that is, but it is not here. It's worked earlier, but for some reason it doesn't work. Load. All right, let's try that. There we go. So we have our GPS coordinates here. So I'm going to just pull this out. So it is a separate window, because my short-term memory is terrible. And, so you can see both. Oh, I can see both of those. You guys can't see it so much, but. Um, so then, um, and so if you want to edit this, like if you already loaded a site or whatever, um, if you want to do a new launch site, you would just come in here and change the name. So in this case, um, this would be like Michelle's secret launch site. Um, actually, this would be Apogee technically, but and then the latitude is thirty-eight nine zero two nine two six, and the longitude is negative one zero four eight two six zero four five. Oops, didn't like the negative. Clicked on the wrong thing. The altitude at ground level, um, that's one thing you have to kind of know. Um, we're at 6,000 feet um, here, just over 6,000 feet. The landing zone altitude, assuming you're landing in the same spot you're launching from, is usually about the same. Um, this is above sea level. Um, and then the launch altitude above ground level, that would be if you were launching from, like, I mean, you could do it from like on top of a building or something, although you would just change your altitude. But um, like if you're launching from a balloon, weather balloon or something, that's where you would, um, so you know your altitude, but then you also know how high the rocket will be in the air when it launches. So it should be zero 99% of the time. Um, so you can see the Apogee, so this reloaded here. Um, it's a little bit off, it looks like. We're the blue roof. <laughs> so that's our building there. Um, so it's just a hair off. Um, as you can see, we are spitting distance from um, the interstate, so we don't launch from our um, 
parking lot um, <laughs> because the rockets would land on the middle of the interstate and probably scare a lot of people. Um, we go launch at the score launch site usually if we launch. Um, so that's how you do these. So you put that there and then if you want to save it, you click save this launch site and um, this is where you can edit some of the other things like is this a rocketry club launch location? So if you have a club flying there, um, the type of club, um, your normal things. Is permission required to launch here? Um, that way people know, you know, if it's like a school, then you, you know, it's public or something, then you don't necessarily need like, permission. But a lot of the clubs fly on private land, and so you can't just like go out to their fields and launch whenever you want. Uh, club name, contact, email. Um, if you want, this will be, if you share this, it will be public. So um, you'll be aware that that would be the case. And then in, any notes. Um, you can put in there parking lot and if you click submit um, and that will be added to your launch sites and then if you go to choose a launch site you can choose like I showed you before from the public ones but your private ones are actually saved in this other tab um, I'm still logged in. I did the Eiffel Tower earlier just for fun um, and saved it, but I think I was logged in with my other account because um, it's not here. Um, so yeah, so Ron, that's how you would add um, a new launch site. Um, and so we will launch this from close to our parking lot. Um, so you might have to narrow in a little bit on um, on the longitude and latitude because our address is kind of funny. Um, it's kind of hard to find. It's sort of like a made up address. So um, Google knows where we are. If you ever are driving here and need to come visit, uh, you can, uh, uh, it'll get you here, but uh, it's a little tricky to find us because we're tucked back. Um, okay, so let's see what this, I need this one more. Uh, there we go. It's just loading really slow. Um, Ron wanted us to land the rocket in Tim's parking spot, but that's a little bit beyond. Uh, you might be able to play with it, um, play with your parameters to see. Um, around. Oh, yeah, see, we're in the middle of the street here. We're in the middle of a parking lot, technically. Um, is where our rocket, rocket's launching from, but... And... here we go. And actually... I don't know why that's stopping. At Apogee. There may be a setting for that. Um, it'll stop at Apogee if you're a demo user. Oh, I picked eight zero. That also didn't help. But yeah, so Ron, that's how you um, how you would add those in. So you could fly from your front lawn if you want to, even though you wouldn't necessarily do that in real life. Um, but it's kind of a fun ex experiment to do, and and that's the cool thing is if you haven't really played with Google Earth before, this is a different way to kind of play with like where can you launch from, too. So there is that. Um, let me check. I saw some questions come in. Um, checking the time, and I wasted some of the um, microphone issues. Question, a tube fin rocket like the Pemberton King Kraken has tube fins with a canted leading edge on the tubes. How does Roxon model varying leading edge angles for the tube fins? So, unfortunately, Roxon can't do canted edges of tubes. Um, it's just not set up for angled tubes at all, so you would just put them in as straight ones, unfortunately. Um, I bet we have the thing cracking. I don't know if we, it's in Roxin. It's been out of production for so long that I know they pulled some of the kits um, from some of the um, the new 10.0 because they just weren't available. Um, as you can see, there are 20 thousand different Roxins on this computer. So we'll see. 
So in the designs folder, it's sorted by manufacturer. So Pemberton and the King Kraken. And yeah, sure, we'll save my changes. So if you look here, you can see that in the 2D and then the 3D, they're just straight because there's just no way, Ruxin just wasn't set up for that canted edge. Um, I don't know if, if tube fins with canted forward edges are going to make that much of a difference um, with your coefficient of drag, but Tom, you could possibly fly it a couple times and see if your CD is different um, than what is posted or what is assumed in Roxim and then tweak it back down. If you want to change your CD, like if you have flight data and you've determined what the CD is, um, the CD, this tab here in Roxim, um, we'll do it. It'll automatically calculate the CD, um, but there's some defaults um, in the preferences. Um, that it was here, but somewhere used to be 75. Maybe this is where it's at. It's just weird that this one's 90, but uh, maybe because of the tube fin, somebody actually tweaked it. Um, so yeah, you can change your CD. So once you have actual flight data for a rocket, um, you know, Roxxon's only as good as the data we put into it. Um, and, we, and it makes some big assumptions on the coefficient of drag of rockets because they tend to average out to about the same. And from there it's tweaking, but it's not usually big drastic things. Um, changes, but you can come in here and tweak the different levels. This is a single stage rocket, so most of these sustainer plus booster are just ignored because they don't matter for that. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and then Tom has a follow up question If a tube fin is not round but rather a square, like a bomb fin frame, say four fins and an outside square. How do you add that fin to Roxin? Um, so you're talking more like a ringtail, maybe, where you have four fins. So you know your normal. That's not four. Um, four fins, and then you have like a box around the fins, possibly. Um, it's probably. Mm, there is a ringtail option um, for in Roxim, but it's going to be round. Um, so the ringtail is here, but oops, switch to a base view. We set our OD um, yeah, nine inches, seven five. Oops, not eight hundred and seventy five, Michelle. That would be wrong. Tube material. So normally, when you're doing a, a tube fin, I went a little fast there. Um, we actually Roxham has a ringtail like tube fin. Um, component so it'll make it for you real easy so you don't have to like add all the fins and then add a ring around it and figure out everything. Um, what you would do is you would click the ring fail, ring tail fin. Um, you'd set your um, outside diameter and your inside diameter for that ring, um, how long it is. So if your length is like one inch long. Um, and then location. Change this here. Location where it is on the rocket. This is funny because we've got the tube fins on it, but um, this is my ring fin here in blue. Um, the tube material, um, so I'm sort of answering your question, Tom, but <laughs> also showing you how to do ring tails. The pylons, those would be the connector pieces um, connecting the ring tail to the rocket. So we have a, this is kind of in the way because of the words, but um, we have three pylons. You can see the three different ones there. Um, you can select the pylon material, balsa, um, the thickness. It assumes um, eight inch. Um, 
I'm guessing it is, I think it assumes the length of the, the um, ringtail is the length of the pylons. So if your pylons are different, then you have to kind of go with option B. Um, you can change the radial position, just rotate this, but that just changes where the pylons are because um, it's a ring. Uh, mass overrides the same for anything. If you want to override the mass on it, it'll automatically calculate it otherwise. Um, so that would be how you do a round one. Um, so using something like that, you absolutely couldn't do a square. You, the alternative would be maybe to use pods and do fins on fins. Yeah, um, looks like you guys are already kind of headed there. Um, I'm going to take these two fins off because they're just confusing um, for this, these purposes. Um, would be to do like fins on fins, which would be pods. Um, but then what would be tricky would be um, lining them up. So you could do your fin set. Um, so you have your standard fin set. Um, um, so you would do your your rockets, your rockets, your fins. Um, I'm going to shorten these. Yeah. It got weird, but um, and I need to put our material in. So balsa. So we have our sort of pylons for lack of a better word. And then you would need to add a pod. Okay, and you can only add pods to each individual fin. I haven't done pods on fins in a really long time. So you do one, you would do one of these and then you just copy and create the other fins would be the easiest thing. So this is just my um, pod one. Um, and when you're doing fins on fins, pods, like a pod is nothing. <laughs> it's just telling Roxon that you're going to connect one piece to another piece. So it physically doesn't have any sort of like mass or whatever. I mean, it can, um, but it's just telling Roxon to, um, that something's going to be added. So you can see right now the calculated component mass is zero. Um, in my head a little bit, I could sort of think of it as like glue. Um, it's the glue that sticks the parts together. So it, in that way, maybe you could add mass for a um, glue, the glue or that glues it together. That would be kind of hard to measure, I guess, unless you measure out your glue before you glue it on. But um, and then we can add another fin to the fin, and um, we just want one fin because we're doing one fin at a time. So you don't, unless you want three fins, um, and it's gonna make some numbers up here. Oops. Um, so I just came up with a friend. You can see it added that little tiny blue. I'm going to change the thickness so it matches the thickness of the other fins. Um, so I added it there. Now we're going to take the radial position and we're going to rotate it. And this is where you're going to be able to get your, if it's a square, then you're basically going to be 90 degrees. Um, and it's just easier to type in 90, but, um, and in this case, now that we know 90, um, we can start making the lengths and have everything longer. Um, ooh, that was really long. Um, and do our sort of box tail fin there. Um, so you can do it, it's just going to be a bit of a slog to, to get all those pieces in. The nice thing is, is um, this would be easier with four fins, but um, you could take that fin, so like, we'll just say fin one, um, and then um, what I probably would do is instead of setting, instead of starting that original fin set with three fins, I would start with one. Um, but you can copy um, the pod and go to file, um, edit, copy, 
and then go to fin set and edit paste. And so you can see it added up there. And then um, you know, and then you went you can go in and play with that angle um, again to make it so it's maybe it's negative 90. I don't know. That was the wrong one, but so um, play with it so you can get your square. I guess technically it'd be zero, huh? It's straight up. Um, and you'd have to play with it a little bit, but you could make sort of a box ring tail fin that way. Um, whether or not it would be accurate for like coefficient of drag, um, lift and things like that, that's a million dollar question there. Um, Roxen, fins and Roxen do a specific thing and have a specific, have specific physics that go along with them. So anytime you start messing with what they're doing a little bit, you would want to check your, you know, check it against a real flight. Do you have to fly it on a low, you know, low thrust motor to kind of test it out? Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that helps a little bit. It's kind of a weird way to do it, but square fins are, are or square tubes and fins are kind of tricky because they're not the norm um, for that. But so you can do it. Um, and then honestly, it'll look super cool when you do your three D view because you'll have <laughs> these look super kind of cool kind of weird there um but then your 3d view would, would be kind of cool looking and you could make the 3d view definitely look like the real rocket it's just the the physics of it gets a little bit weird um for that so um not run not me says I just spent a small fortune on contest balsa. Is it a material choice or do I have to weigh and add it? Um, um yeah, it'll tell me it will affect um the the, the 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 square fins will definitely affect it. It's just I'm not hundred percent that I, I don't know that Roxanne would calculate it correctly. So you'd want to be real careful on your stability um on that. Um, and real careful when you, your first flight, just making sure it's right. Um, it might be accurate. Um, it just starts to get into the weird stuff. Tim would know better about when you get into those really weird fins, if, um, how well Roxham does. Um, I would just, you know, and I would always take, you know, what Roxham gives you with a bit of precaution just because it is stimulation. And again, it's based on, um, virtual information and real life can always be different. Um, there. So um, for the balsa material, um, so we have a bunch of materials in Roxham already. Um, so, and they're kind of grouped by type of um, part of the racket. So for the most part, we try to have, um, you know, things listed in the fin set that you would use for fins. So we wouldn't put um, like nylon, like a parachute material, wouldn't be listed as a fin material because you couldn't have flappy, I mean, you could, but you know, you don't have parachute nylon as a fin material. Um, over time, that's sort of um, grown a little bit. So sometimes you will find really um, bizarre things in there, but for the most part, they should be there. So there are a bunch of different um, types of wood in here. And these are years and years and years and decades and decades of just like materials being added and this is Tim's also Tim's um old computer and he's added lots of weird things too that he's used for different things so there may be more showing here that are in your Roxham. so um balsa there's just a straight balsa there um when you get into the plywoods there's like 10 trillion different kinds of plywood so um balsa uh, birch is pretty common that's what we use for our ply plywood um, a type of birch aircraft, any aircraft material is going to be probably be really um, lightweight because um, the planes usually lightweight stuff. So you can look through here and then you can either pick a material and then compare it against your physical fin and see if the mass um, is correct. If it's not or if you can't find it or if you want to actually check the densities of the material, you go under the rocket menu, which you can't see exactly here because the way my screen is. But um, you can't move that. 
Um, up here in the menu above where you can see there's the Roxam file edit view and there's the rocket menu and in the rocket menu is edit database and then materials. So this is where all the materials live that are in Roxam. Um, fins, parachutes, any, any, if you can select it from the list, it's in the here. And um, so this is um, all the different materials. Um, the densities are listed here. I'm not sure why I'm getting this mini ball of depth, but there we go. Um, so um, the densities are listed in the units and then the actual density. Um, so you can look up and find your balsa here. Um, and um, for some reason my scroll bar is just not here. Um, but you can find it in here um, and look and check if your um, material is the same density. Um, especially if you're really concerned about it and you spend a lot of money on it, you probably know the density of your wood. Um, for example, we buy balsa from a place and they have three different densities. They don't, like, we don't buy a certain density, but the other ones will call us and be like, we only have the heavy, you know, the hard density, like hard, hard version, do you want that? And it's like, no, we want the soft stuff or the medium stuff. Um, so, um, the more particular you are and the more you spend on it, you probably know. But if it's not in here, you look through here and can't, um, can't find it, you can always add a new one. So you click um, at the bottom of the screen. The screen is having sizing issues for some reason. Um, at the bottom of the screen, there's a button that says add new. You'll just have to trust me on that one, I guess. It says add new, and when you click it, yeah, I think my computer, the fan's running really hot on this right now, so I think I kind of have overwhelmed it. Um, you'll click add new, and then you'll put, and it usually adds to the bottom of the list a line, which it's frozen right now, so it doesn't want to do, but um, it'll add a line. You can put in the density um, for these different columns, fixed dimension, they're all none. I'm not sure even what that does anymore. Um, fixed dimension units and fixed dimension value. Um, hey, I have scroll bars. Um, sort of. Here we go. Um, it's getting very trippy now. Um, so rocketry use. I have no idea why the programmer put this in a million years ago because obviously all of them are for rocketry use. If they're in Roxim and you're going to use them is moving very slowly. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, then And then each of these columns is, whoa, it's doing all of my movements now. Um, each of these columns is where it would show up. So if you want it to show up when you're choosing a fin, then you'll want to check the fin box. I'm a little scared to scroll right now. So like um, this um, like steel, for some reason, is set for fin set. Um, and um, so you would check it for the materials you want. So if it's balsa wood, you're probably, you know, you're not going to really want it for a body tube, um, but you'd want it for a fin set. Um, you, depending on if you're, you bought balsa block, you could use it for a nose cone if you're going to like machine um, down a nose cone. Um, so you just check the boxes and those ones will tell, tell Roxanne when to show up um, for that bulkheads, you know, anytime, anything um, for that. And then when you click OK, when you go to add a new item or edit an item, um, that new material should be here. If you don't see it, try restarting Roxim, um, but it should be there so you can add like rocket wood, whatever rocket wood is <laughs> or um, if, so for that. So there's always an option so you don't have to add it every time or modify it every time. Um, it will be, um, you just add it one time and then you can choose it from the list. And you might find, especially with wood, um, wood is just really inconsistent in its density, like even piece to piece, um, because it's made of fibers, um, especially like plywood is made of layers of wood. So even with the best intentions, you, you might still need to tweak it. So if you make your, your material and you get it close and then you want to tweak it, you could always do a mass override on your fins um, by clicking the mass override tab. Just as a reminder, whenever you do a mass override, you have to put the CG in um, to tell it where the balance point is, because if you don't, it's gonna take all, it doesn't know how to distribute the mass. So you say that my rocket weighs, 
you know, a pound, but it doesn't know if it's back heavy, front heavy, you know, if it's completely evenly distributed. And so the default is this zero um, inches from the tip of the nose cone. And you may think, oh, if I leave it zero, it'll like figure it out or just average it. No, what it does is it makes all that weight and puts the CG at the very tip, the very, very tip of the nose cone. And then your rocket's going to be like super um, overstable, which would be great, except it's not real. And so then you might have a safety issue because your rocket might actually not be stable at all. It just, uh, because you're overriding what it actually is. Um, obviously for, if you do parts override, uh, mass override, it's just going to be the front edge of the part. Um, but if you do the mass override for the entire rocket, it's going to put your center of gravity literally at the front tip, um, here. And then it's going to say, of course it's stable because it's got many inches between the center of pressure and the center of gravity. Um, next, uh... Tom then asks, thin material that is composite, say plywood frame covered with paper or basswood edges, is it best to just weigh and override the weight of the thin? Um, probably, I mean, unless you can figure out the density, but the density is not consistent across it. So with those, I would, I would just do a mass override on them. Um, just measure them, like weigh them before you put them on the rocket or, well, it's hard. You can't really weigh them once they're on the rocket. So as long as they're like lamp that laminated or like multi-level composite um, thin, and you have them completed, just weigh them and throw them on. If you have a part you need to add and you can't weigh it ahead of time, um, because say say you glued the balsa fin to the rocket and then you papered it or fiberglassed it after it was on the rocket, you're not going to know what the mass of that is. That's when it's probably just easiest to use the full rocket mass override. Um, if it's not close to being ac accurate, um, just because it's really hard to, you're going to spend a lot of time tweaking just to get the fins to be kind of right. Um, and that's when you would, um, again, you need that center of gravity. So you would put your mass in once the rocket's complete, you've got all the paint on it, all the glue on it, weigh the rocket, and then you'll find the balance point. So I forgot to grab a rocket today, but You'll, you take the rocket and you just got bounce on your finger or your arm if it's really big. Um, you probably won't get it to the point where it will actually balance there. It's going to wobble, but if you can kind of find that center point, that's going to be your center of gravity um, for that. And, uh, and then go from there. But yeah, I think that it would be hard to, unless you have, like I said, the completed fins before you glued them on, um, then you can just measure them and do the mass override on this. Um, uh, on the actual parts, um, thin part. Um, okay, we're pretty much at the end of our um, journey today. A couple minutes left. Um, I did want to point out something that happened, um, we discovered this week. Uh, nobody's mentioned it, so hopefully it's all working great for you guys. Um, so software has security certificates um, that basically tell your computer that the software is safe. Um, to use. And the security certificate that Roxim uses for the security software, which isn't our software, it's a third-party software that's integrated in, um, it expired September 30th. There's a place, replacement one that, that's being used, and I think most computers can see the swap and can automatically update. Um, and so it's not like not everybody's having this problem, but there are some people who are getting locked out of Roxim. It says that your Roxim's not um, not registered, and when you go to click on it, if you were watching me last week doing this, this computer had that has that pro had that problem. So you click the activate Roxim now, and nothing happens. Um, and if you click on the logs button to see like the data at the very bottom, it'll say error four, like unable to connect a server or something. It's because the certificate expired. The certificate's used in a bunch of other softwares too, so if you're having other problems, this may be the same problem. So this morning, um, I, I did a video tutorial on how to fix it on a Mac uh, computer, and I tested it on this one, and it worked great. So um, that is on our FAQs page, um, and you can get to that if um, it does apply to you. Um, I closed all my internet windows, so let me. Um, I have this note up here. Um, and so we're, um, but I figured it out for Mac. So you go to how to and guides, software, and then um, Roxim FAQs. And if you're not familiar with Roxim and different things, this, this how to and guides and software is a really helpful 
tool. Um, we have our Roxim video tutorials here. These are covering how to use Roxim, how to do the pods that I showed you very quickly today. There's a video tutorial on doing pods and fins on fins and things um, that will walk, walk you through that, how to load any motors if you say make your own motors or a new motor comes out and isn't in Roxim um, that you can add it. So there's lots of useful things there. But um, today I added under the Roxim FAQs and it's in the troubleshooting section um, and it's number five on the Mac, um, the workaround for that. And basically you have to download the certificate and load it on your computer. On a Mac, it's super easy. You download a file and you throw it in a folder and you're done and then it works fine. Um, I'm working on the Windows and of course Windows is way more complicated than that. Um, so, and I'm not a Windows person anyways, so um, I'm, I'm working on that. Hopefully we'll have that um, beginning of next week on how that works on Windows too. Mostly seems to be affecting Mac people, but we have had a couple Windows people that's affected. So just so you guys know, um, if that happens, don't panic. Try coming here um, and that will um, get you going if you're on a Mac and all the Windows one will be posted here as soon as I get it sorted out. Um, and um, But um, it's just a thing that happened and unfortunately it was outside of our control and they didn't notify us about it. Um, so it took us a couple days to realize what was going on anyways. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to cover that just to let you know if you see something, um, if it's Roxon's working great for you and you, you know, it's not telling you your software is not registered anymore or whatever, just ignore everything I said. Like I said, I think most computers are smart enough to update that certificate. It's just some of them randomly. I had a teacher call this morning and she has five computers and one of them has this issue and they're all Macs and they're all, you know, kind of running the same thing. So um, it's just weird, you know, software. It's always weird. Um, so yeah, um, if you have any other questions for next week, Tim will be back. Um, definitely email them through the contact form on our site, which is, um, you can get to up here, just click the contact form and um, fill out what you, the questions you had. Um, like I said, Ron had his question that was it gave me a couple minutes to play with before the meeting. Um, the other thing I will say is if you have questions, try to submit them at least a half an hour before the Roxim Live. After that point, just put them in the chat um, because um, we don't, it takes us a while to set this up and so we don't generally see those questions that come in kind of last minute. Um, so you can just throw them in the chat live and, and it nets to the same thing. Um, but yeah, so I think that's it for today. We don't really have any other questions. I appreciate the handful of you that showed up today, even without the scheduled um, Roxim and putting up with me and the microphone issues and last week the computer issues. Um, I'm happy Tim's going to be back and taking this on again. Um, but if you guys have questions too, you can always email. I'm usually the one of the people who handles the, the more in-depth Roxim um, tech support, not in the Roxim Live. So you'll probably hear from me if you have any other questions too. Um, but with that, I think that's everything. Um, and I'll go ahead and sign off for now. And um, we will see you next week.